Hello and welcome back to Analog Comics. Today I'm going to talk about Robert Silverberg's Colonies, Return to Bel Belzagor. It's a book that I don't see a lot of videos about, but there should be. So I'll make one to fulfill the void. Return to Belzagor is very old school sci-fi, which I like a lot. This comic book is an adaptation of Silverberg's book, published in 1970, called Downward to the Earth. And that book in its also was kind of an adaptation or, or a version of Joseph Conrad's Heart of Darkness. At least it was based on that. If Heart of Darkness sounds any familiar, it was also the base for the Coppola's movie Apocalypse Now. And as the name implies, this story is a commentary on colonization and, and colonies in general. And it's a story of Eddie Gunderson, ex lieutenant uh, from Earth that used to colonize uh, the Belzacor planet. At the beginning of the story, Eddie returns to Belzacor as a kind of, uh, to, not tourist guide, but as a guide anyway. And he's supposed to lead this scientific uh, research and uh, trip within the planet. But Mr. Gunderson has a reputation on the planet. He has a past that he hasn't been able to um, process yet, even by himself. Years earlier, as he was there leading the colonization, uh, he did some things that he still regrets a lot and he doesn't feel good returning to the planet at all. Another important twist in that story is that while Mr. Gunderson was away from the planet, it also became independent. So he is now returning to an independent planet and the planet inhabits two intelligent species, uh, species that humans can interact with. One of them is this elephant looking, very sad looking uh, creature. And another one is uh, a one that stands on two legs, more human-like. And both of those species remember Mr. Gunderson well, and he is not really welcome. But as an old school sci-fi, this is not about action and fighting. Um, ray guns, blast. There's very little action in the book. This is like a thinking man sci-fi, a very smart book in a way. And basically the only thing it offers is a journey. It's a kind of story of transcendence. It's a big word, but the story is still very easy to approach. It did remind me a little bit of two movies, uh, Annihilation, uh, where Natalie Portman is the main role there, and also Stalker. Well, they are both, those both movies are, uh, they are based on a book also. And it's about journey into a very alien land landscape where you watching uh, th the story unfold, you are also as lost as the person going into the zone because everything is alien. And I absolutely love that kind of sci-fi. And during the story, while Gunderson is taking the group deeper and deeper, they realize that although the human, humans were colonizing the planet years ago, they don't know anything about it. It holds a lot of secrets and some of them are very surprising. And while the journey progresses, it also transforms the people in the group, all of them. And change in general is a big theme throughout the book as what the group is trying to achieve they're trying to get access into a rebirth ceremony that is a secret and sacred ceremony of the local species. And humans are not allowed to see that or even know what it is. But there are a few things about the book itself that I need to tell because this book has a really weird history. Before going to that weird part, I'll just go through the technical bits. First, it's a humanoid publishing book, hardcover. Of course, the story itself is by Robert Silverberg, but the comic book adaptation is done by Philip Thirald and Laura Sucheri. Sorry for the pronunciation. And as we look inside, there is the ribbon marker also. The book is very well done. Nothing wrong about that. And it has a really big margins inside. So there is no, absolutely no gutter loss in the book. But then the strange thing, the weird thing, it's the, it's the name. I thought that this was volume two and I didn't buy this book 
because I had the first volume, the thing that I thought to be first volume, I had it on my shopping list for a long time. And later I found that they're actually the same thing. What Humanoid has done here, it has changed both the cover and also the name of the book. And the old name doesn't refer in any way to this. The only way I thought that they are related is the creature on the cover. I'll show you the original cover because it's, it's included here, but with the wrong name. It's right here. I think this is a really cool cover. This is the cover that got me interested of the book. Elephant and sad looking creature staring down at the small human. Nothing else happening here. Though. This was very eerie and mysterious cover. So I wanted to get this book, but it was always sold out. And the name of that book was not Robert Silverberg's Colonies Return to Belzegor. It said Downward to the Earth. And Downward to the Earth is the name of Robert Silverberg's original uh, novel. The name is reference to Bible. Who knows if spirit of people rises upward and the spirit of animals goes downward to the earth. Now I did memorize that for this part, but uh, it's a smart name. It's a really, really smart name when you know what happens in the book and it's sad that they changed it. But just so you know, don't go after the book that has this cover. This is the same book. If you go to Humanoid's website, it does say now that this is a new version of the Downward to the Earth. But I'm pretty sure it didn't read that before or I missed it. Why they made the change is not explained, but my explanation would be that this cover might not be selling enough. It's too weird. Although for me, this was the message that told me that you have to get it. They're both very European covers, but I think this is a bit more standard and more boring. So there could be that, you know, they just wanted to change something that gets more people to buy it. But then I also read that Humanoids was planning to do this as a series. They were planning to adapt more of Robert Silverberg's sci-fi books. And I have not read any of them, sadly. But I did read that he usually uh, talks about this colonization and, and this type of topics. So maybe his other books would fit into the uh, category of Robert Silverberg's colonies, even if they are not happening in the same universe, but they have the same kind of theme. And that's why they gave this book its subname, Return to Belsacor. I'm just guessing here. And if you go to Humanoid Publishing website, it also tells that this has been edited for content, but they don't tell what has been edited. And that's a bit annoying. But whatever it is that has been done or edited about the book, I didn't find anything that would bother me. Here are the people involved in making the book. And then there is the list of other works by the creators of this book. I'm actually really interested of the source of class. Not sure if it's good or bad, but I've seen, I really like the art of Laura Zuccheri. The way the story progress is really cool. This is very movie-like. It jumps between the past and the present. And you don't really know anything about the planet, the species, the history or, or that sacred ritual, the ceremony. And all this is revealed very slowly. And while reading this, I kept thinking if this is also how Silverberg wrote his original book, if this was the technique he used there, because at least for me, this works very well. I really wanted to know more and more. They're giving these flashbacks as a kind of breadcrumbs to give you a li little bit more information, only need to know basis. And what it does in a storytelling is that you are in the same journey as the person you are following. In some stories, you are there as a, almost like a higher being, just watching it happen and you know what the other characters don't know. But here you are as lost as the group and the people traveling deeper into the planet. So you get to experience the strangeness, the alienness uh, by yourself with these people. 
this must have been a challenge for the creator team because there is not, as I said, there is not much shooting or action happening in that sense. It, it's it's the journey that has to be made kind of uh, interesting, and that must be difficult. In fact, if I would have to find anything to complain about the adaptation is how some of the personal uh, interactions between people have been handled. Sometimes they feel a bit rushed. They just happen suddenly. You kind of see them coming, but at the same time, you wish that they had a bit more time to build them. But this might be just the adaptation thing, because in the books, you can stop the time. You can stop there and use even many pages just for the inner conversation of some person. You can stop the time and have that conversation, what he's thinking, and then progress with the action. But when you have pictures, if it's uh, comics or movie, you kind of have to move on. But hey, then again, it's a future. So what do I know about the future relationships? Maybe they happen suddenly. But this is a very small detail, very small detail. And, and it didn't bother me at all. And to kind of underline how good the book is, is that I actually guessed one of the biggest plot points of the book that happens in the end. I guessed it quite early. And it's because I have read uh, another kind of similar story, also written in the same 70s era. But even knowing that didn't really matter because that was not the point. The point was the journey, the journey into the alienness. And the way I think about this journey into strange land stories is that you can kind of uh, spoil it by doing two, one of the two things. The first one is doing it too strange. You build a world that is strange just for the sake of strangeness. There's no logic to it. So it becomes just a gimmick. That's one thing. And the other thing is going to the other opposite direction and explaining too much, which kind of removes the, the distance, distanceness and alienness of the world, which is the main point why you got hooked into it. So it's a tough balance, but I feel that in this story, they, they have managed to do that. When back then I did my research for the Downward to the Earth comic, only to realize that it's actually this comic, I did stumble on some of the reviews where people who had read the original novel had also read the comic. But it was kind of 50-50. Some people said that, well, many people said that this is very true to the original source and they were happy about that. And then there were the, the kind of people that didn't want their favorite book to be touched at all. But that's usually the thing that just comes with it. I don't have the burden of reading the original book. And without knowing what it is, I really, really like this book. And I would love them to continue the series. As I said, Humanoids had a plan to make these colonies some kind of series of adaptations of Silverberg's books. But I haven't seen any, so I don't know what's going on here. The cover has changed, the name is changed, the series is not continuing, but this is a good one and I would love to see it continue. Yet again, another sci-fi book from me, but this is becoming a habit, but I really like sci-fi. I hope you liked the video and if you want to mess with that YouTube algorithm, you can push the like button, but at least I hope to see you in the next one. Bye.